Hey guys, it's me again, Josie. Today we're going to talk about the secret of aging. So today is the first episode of aging. I'm going to introduce what is aging. So stay tuned. E is the beginning of all classics. Basically, all Chinese ancient philosophy is beginning from Yi Jing, which is the head source of Chinese culture. And it is a very important part for the Chinese culture. We can basically say that it is the beginning source of the Chinese culture. So what is Yi Jing? Maybe this is the question that only Chinese would ask. What is Yi Jing? Like you say, you might think Yi Jing is just the name of the book. It's nothing special. People just name it, so we just take it. I think the answer could be more than that. In English, the scholars describe Yi Jing as an ethical guide for our life, a manual for rulers, an oracle for one's personal future and the future of the states, which is right, but not right at the same time. It explains some part of Yi Jing, but that is not the full picture. For Chinese, Yi and Jing mean something more and deeper than that. And all recorded answers might make no sense in a Western concept because it, it doesn't mean any concrete things. It means everything. Yi and Jing, Yi, especially this word, means everything. It can be explained from all perspectives as long as you want to explain it. So you will never get it right. Remember, we've talked about this kind of a concept in Laozi. As long as you name or label a thing, it will always be biased. So that is the reason why Yi Jing has been studied for thousands and thousands of years. And this kind of a study is still going on because we still couldn't figure out everything from Yi Jing. Because as a human being, we can only see a very narrow eye angle from a certain thing. So if you want to study Yi Jing, you really need to open your eyes and open your heart. So people want to ask how this masterpiece has been accomplished. In the general historical point of view, it has accomplished through the way of What does this sentence mean in English? It means it has been through the three very important sages wisdom in the ancient time. The first one is Fu Xi, and the second one is the Emperor Wen of Zhou, and the third one is the one that we're familiar with. The Confucius. Yi Jing has been refined through a lot of intellectual and wisdom sages in the ancient Chinese history. So it is not accomplished by a single person. It is a collective wisdom. So what Yi Jing contains? In Chinese we say qi da wu wai, qi xiao wu nei, which means it has no boundaries both outside and inside. It is basically everything. It is about the rules of the universe, the secret of the universe. So nowadays, people would like to set up systems such as the economic systems, the environmental systems, the international relations systems, the political systems, and etc. However, compared with Yi Jing, all those systems are too narrow and too biased and too small. So if Yi Jing contains everything, so what does it use for? It might surprise you. Yi Jing is the key of the secret of the universe. Sounds very exaggerated, I know. There are so many scientists who's working on the cutting edge knowledge nowadays in the world and in their area and they're trying to explain the secret and the rules of the universe and they're trying to reveal the fact of the world as well. However, how come such a little book as Yi Jing can explain everything? It sounds like impossible. Well, it does. But we're so shallow to understand Yi Jing so far. That's why Confucius says, which means Tao is the rule of the universe. He tried to tell us that we're the one who can carry on and develop the Tao forward, not the other way around. The universe will never develop and enrich the human beings. It's our responsibility to carry the Tao forward. So how can we decode? How can we decode the secret from the I Ching? How can we discover the rule and the secret of the universe? Well, the sages left us three important keys to discover this. So the first one is Fu Xi Ba Gua, which is the Fu Xi's eight diagrams. So Chinese people knows these diagrams very well. In fact, we know it very well, but we don't know what it is. Well, it is actually the first golden key 
to open the chamber of the secret. We've held this key for over 7,000 years, since Confucius. But sadly, we still hadn't been enlightened yet. We thought it is just a thing for decoration, or it is the thing for countering the evil force, just like a talisman. And it confuses a lot of the non-Chinese people alike. So this is the first misunderstanding in the Chinese culture because the Fuxi 8 diagram is not a decoration. It is not a talisman. It is the key to decode the secret of I Ching. So basically, Fuxi 8 diagrams is talking about one important thing in I Ching and one important thing that the universe wrong. It's a concept of yin and yang. We're familiar with concept like yin and yang, but what does yin and yang mean? So the scientists, basically the scientists study the fundamental elements in the universe. It can be as small as a quark. But for sage wisdom, the fundamental elements of the universe is just yin and yang, and it constitutes everything. Okay, so the second key that we hold is Wen Wang Liu Shi Si Gua, which is 64 hexagram. So this 64 hexagram illustrates the 64 secrets of the universe, which means the 64 rules of the universe. Then you might ask, why is 64? Why is not 63 or why is not 65? Well, I Ching is the book all about math, but it's very different from the modern math that we learned. Numbers in I Ching has their own lives. They're alive. They always change. They talk to us through this change diagram. They talk differently from person to person. For example, for Westerners, the numbers talk to Westerners like one is one, two is two, one plus one equals two. But for Chinese, the number talks to us one is not one, two is not two. So Chinese people would like to say, 这件事不过是一而二,二而一而一, which means this thing just one equals two, two equals one. We'll discuss this when we're talking about the math in I Ching. So the 64 hexagram represents 64 codes of the universe and they appeared as numbers. And all the numbers are alive, please remember that, they're changeable. Just like I Ching, E means change. And the third key that we hold is the Book of Ten Winds, which is written by Confucius. And in this collection or in this video, I, I want to use the Confucius concept from the Book of Ten Winds to explain a lot of the things in I Ching, so they're not a whole system, but I just scattered it, the concept like bit by bit while I'm trying to talk about or explain something in it. So okay, I'm just introduce some basic ideas or probably threw a bomb there, <laughs> plant the seeds there, talk a lot of secrets there, but how we're going to decode the secrets of I Ching. So please stay tuned.